Foot Clan, what a wild and crazy week. A ton of touchdowns were scored. We've got all the studs on today's show. And if you're mourning, well, it's probably because of these stinkers we're going to talk about. Let's get you ready for Monday night and playoff week two. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Monday, December 9th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you once again. Oh, what a day it was. Touchdowns aplenty. I heard whew, I heard on one of the Red Zone channels that they almost broke the all-time record for most uh, touchdowns on a Sunday. A lot of ups this this week. I remember early when the games kicked off, it was just like every game was doing something great. A lot of downs. A lot of injuries. I felt mm, like this was not yeah. a healthy week either. Yeah, there are teams that will have one, but then have to deal with some pretty big roster changes. Good thing there's a podcast to help them. Oh, dude, what is it? Uh, let me look it up. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. But we're here as well. Find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. It was a crazy day. It really was. It was a, a wild day. We'll get into all of the news. First, we'll get sophisticated. We'll react. Well, you'll react because you gave us your best puns for the weekend. Let's try them on for size. Mm, yes. <laughs> There's Boston Eckler. Mm, mm, He's in charge. Boston Reckler, you mean? No, oh. I meant Awesome Eckler. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the winner. <laughs> OB Junk? Oh, mm. boo. Do you give him a pass now that he's... Negative. Oh. I do not give him a pass. We'll talk about that later. He has sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Granderson. Oh. Benny Smells. Yes, yes. King of the Tannehill. Mm, Bobby. I love him. Jack Spoils. Is that yeah. supposed to be Doyle? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that one sucks. <laughs> oh, Court, Bla Court Bland Sutton. Oh. Um, this snot one's not lock. Snod logger. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Swing and a Michelle. <laughs> That's oh, good. That's my favorite one in a long time. Mike, you can take this one. This one's from me, Raheem Goatstert. Oh, so wow. bad. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's pretty. Uh, I also wanted Tyler Higbeast. I feel like he, he belonged there. Absolutely. That was very good. It came yeah. after the music, so it is disqualified. <laughs> and not sophisticated at all. Not Let, at all. Not at all. <laughs> Let's muse for a second on... We brought up dis players we're disappointed in. I don't know how I didn't bring him up, but more than anybody, swinging a Michelle, mm. Sonny oh, Michelle. Yeah. Mm. I mean, he sucks. He sucks in our in our dynasty league that uh, Mike and I are on the same. <laughs> don't we, don't look at Al Borland <laughs> because Al Borland knows <laughs> he's, this. He's Dude, he is running around the building right now, just victory lap and Kia! You know what the biggest problem with Sonny? I think you were saying something. I, I was just Sorry. saying, Mike, Mike and I are in a dynasty league where yes. we co own together, and we traded a second, a dynasty rookie second round pick and third round pick for Sony Michelle. Yeah, we, we stole about him. About halfway through the season. Absolutely. Just stole him. The other guy got ridiculed, and now it's like. You I wonder who those players are going to be in you the second and third. You stole a 1.5 <laughs> fantasy points. We stole someone that we accidentally have started several times. Here's have, the biggest. Have you ever like, mugged a person by giving them your wallet? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Here, take this. You throw it right in their face, yeah. though. It probably it's, hurts. It's still at gunpoint. Yeah. You, 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 you hold them up. It's still very scary take for this. them, but then at the end of the day, they have $200 they didn't have. <laughs> It's so, you know, yesterday, uh, Sony, uh, not Sony Michelle, Nick Chubb had like three carries against one of the worst running defenses in the league. And I said to you, I said, well, at least he's the guy, kind of guy that can break off a 65 yard run. And a boom. 10 minutes later, yeah. it was a 58 yard run. Sony Michelle 
has no possibility of doing that. He's the type of guy that can rip off a 11 yard run. Yeah, if you give him enough, if you give yeah. him enough carries, one of those is going to go for 11. And you tip the field to one direction so he's got a little bit of momentum. <laughs> I mean, I'm just so frustrated and upset because uh, the Sonny Michelle we got in the three playoff games last year was incredible, dynamic. And yes, he's had some good games this year, but it's been when he's fallen into the end zone three times and there's no upside. The team, is, the Patriots are struggling on offense because mm -hmm. nobody's making any plays. Nobody. I mean, Julian Edelman is not really a playmaker in that capacity. The way that Josh Gordon could catch a deep bomb. The way that... Oh, Josh Gordon. You know, they should have that guy. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. Nik Nikhil Harry made a pretty good play <clears throat> last night when he scored that touchdown. And oh, that didn't true. count. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, swing a Michelle by me on Sony. This is a Whoops. disastrous year. I'll even say that to you, Al Borland. You were right once. Thank you. All right. <laughs> that was it is surprising. Yeah, that he was right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly rewind. I'll give you the rewind on our big uh celebrity leagues the sleeper bowl we had a bye oh how'd we do we well we did we, we advance we did all right we defeated bye week oh, oh yeah something i doubt sony michelle could do uh <laughs> oh, I, i'm mad at him i know <laughs> i love it and then in our uh league one league we did have a matchup that didn't really matter right because that is correct our playoffs start next week but it was like a pre matchup against Adam Rank. Yes. And then we pre beat him. We did. And then we play him next week. Yes. Yeah. So we're we just practice. Makes it, perfect. Pra perfect practice makes perfect. And yeah. we practiced the win. That was perfect. And Mike, you are still alive in the listener league unless I, I mean you're all, you won this. Yes, week. I did. Yeah. And Great. then I've got the uh, CBS League next week. Mm -hmm. I had the bye this week. And right? I'm going for Not that back-to-back -back Dynasty Championship, the one where I took down Brooks last year in the uh, championship round. Still alive. So we we have some things going on. Now, hopefully, I guess I we could. don't have any of the 10 players that got injured this week. No, we have Parker in League One. Yeah. Uh, all right. Weekly Rewind brought Ooh. to you by Sleeper. A lot of injury news, and that's just what it is today. There's just a ton of it. First, you heard that Od Odell Beckham has been playing with a sports hernia. I don't want to be insensitive to injury. I really don't. I know, we, we, you know, he sucked. But but I feel like, like, what do you believe here? I mean, do, how long has this been going on? How much of an excuse is this for his play? Now well, Baker called out the say, medical we know, staff. We know how long it's been going on because Baker said he should have had or when when Baker, when Baker was asked about it, he said they handled it completely incorrectly. He should have had the surgery like back in August. So it's the whole season. This Well, look at DJX. He missed the whole season because of the same thing. This is rough. I was talking to Jason yesterday. Say, oh, are yeah. you are you ready for next off season? When Odell creeps back into the back of the first or early second. I don't second. know if he'll get in the first, but it'll be – you'll have to take a side. Do you give Odell Beckham a pass that he's been playing with a sports hernia all year? Or is it – or now Odell Beckham is just – he's – he is injury prone because it's just three straight years of of uh, ending he, ending up as a bust because of injury. Someone will, and I think probably appropriately, take a shot on Odell Beckham in the second or third round next year because you should. You should take a shot. I, you can't get players that have already put up 1,400 in double digit in later rounds. So at some point in time, He'll be worth the risk because sure. very few players can do that. And we'll you're we'll see when it is. I mean, but I, now you've got the sports hernia excuse, yeah. and you'll be able to come out and say, "Well, he year number two, he'll be fine." And I can already hear the arguments, and Jason shaking his head. Yeah, I'll I'll see you in June. <laughs> it took Jarvis a year to get used to it. Look how great Jarvis has been. There you now go. with Odell Beckham with a year mm. and no sports hernia, he should be the first player. Plus off that the new board. offensive line that they built. <laughs> Oh yeah, they got they upgraded their offensive line. Baker, your three. New the coach. narratives are go new yes, head coach. New head coach. Uh, the narratives are going to be off the chart. Probably new uniforms. Maybe I think we'll get some new uniforms. Maybe. Uh, all right, injury news. Here we go. Mike Evans knocked out against the Colts. Hamstring injury. It was on a sixty-one yard swan song touchdown pass. It was a beast touchdown. And Bruce Arians has already said he will be shocked if Mike Evans plays again this season. 
He's done. It's brutal. That stinks. At least, at least he got you the touchdown. Be thankful and then be sad. Yep. So he's going to be gone. And a little prequel to tomorrow's episode. I think OJ Howard is a must add candidate. You saw his involvement after Evans went out. Nothing, nothing, no interceptions, no fumbles. Nothing can stop Jameis Winston from throwing the ball down the field. Nothing. He, Not even Brashad Perryman can stop him. We've said this uh, for a long time. He's the only guy out there that you don't care. He throws a he, – we, we knew he starts yep. every game with the obligatory interception or two. Well, he tries and, to get it out of the way, but he doesn't realize there's more to come. Right, and, and, and it's one of those things where it's like you never want to play a, a defense against your quarterback. Right. Except for Jameis. That's always okay because you yep. can get the pick sixes and then he's going to throw more. It works out for both parties. And look, we get a lot right. We get a lot wrong. It's tough to predict fantasy football in general. But we did have a funny moment yesterday where we had somebody just oh, try yeah. to destroy us on Twitter for saying that you would play Jameis Winston when Winston went out with the hand injury. And then Winston ended up the number one quarterback on the week. So yeah. That's Jameis Winston. Foot Clan member, shout out to Scorpio first. He was he was a good uh, good sport, good sport about it. I mean, he, well, we all I had get a it. Laugh. I, to defend him, yeah, I get hating Jameis because if you're a Buccaneers fan or a football fan, what you're seeing, I mean, Jameis had this part of the game where he's on the national broadcast yesterday, where they show him in shotgun, which is permanent, and. He's just covered in sweat. I mean, just head to – like it's Look like me out there. I mean, just covered in sweat, and it just seems like this exasperated, desperate – every play for James is the last play of his career. And he's going to he's gonna make the crazy throw no matter what. And he's eating them Ws. He, he I mean, did. you're talking three in a row for the last five. So, yeah, he's a – you got to play him next week. Lev Bell, inactive with an illness. Bilal Powell suffered an ankle injury in the game. Which is unfortunate because Powell was having a solid game. He was. He was. Something like uh, 17 for 70, something in that range. And close to 100 combined uh, total yards. Ryan Griffin, tight end. Ankle injury. Mm. So we'll have to monitor whether you have him next week. <clears throat> Raiders, running back. Josh Jacobs was inactive. DeAndre Washington had a nice game. Six catches. To go with a touchdown. Yeah, Jacobs is scheduled to have an MRI this week. I mean, if you if you miss the game because you've got a broken bone. Do you think that was news to his medical staff? Like, what? I, I don't know. but Let's I, MRI that thing I could if it's broken. Very well see this uh, lasting more than just this past week. And, and we'll be talking waivers tomorrow, but I would project DeAndre Washington to be the starter again for the Raiders, and they play Jacksonville yeah. next week in Jacksonville – they are not good at football right now. Well, and you might have been playing this guy and need a substitute. That's Rashad Penny. Mm -hmm. Serious That's knee injury. It sucks, man. Unlikely to return this year. Even the ever-optimistic uh, Pete Carroll. Oh, yeah. You know it's bad when Pete Carroll is. significant, yeah. Yeah, so it's an ACL. Players were throwing prayers up. David Johnson to tag in Rashad Penny it's last rough, night. It's man. Rashad Penny was finally... Getting the career going. Last last year looked like a first round bust. Five point seven a carry this year. It was embarrassing for him. Was really getting into the offense the last couple of games. Unfortunate. Speaking of unfortunate. Oh my good this freaking this guy, one man. Stinks. Maybe Ugh. maybe it's not for you. Darius Geis. His body doesn't like football. MCL sprain. Well, his knees certainly don't. Yeah. I mean, he's just dealing with knee injury after knee injury. Could Adrian, have, Adrian Peterson is going to have the lion's share of carries again. I mean, he was... Uh, yeah, he's back. I mean, right back on the radar. You're looking at DeAndre Washington and Adrian Peterson. They play, What's the matchup? They play Philly. Not the best. Terrible. Not the best. Yeah, give him 25 carries, you can be... We'll you'll see. be okay. 25 for 65. No, he's had some big <laughs> games this year when people thought he couldn't run on... Yeah. 25 uh, for 75. Maybe. At this point, you might take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you would. You forget that he went out there against uh, some bigger opponents. and Yeah, yeah. all right. He's Adrian Peterson. <laughs> He's looking it up. Well, no, I mean, he put up 108 on Buffalo, but Buffalo can get beat on the ground. Yes, they can. He put up 81 on San Francisco. That's okay, impressive. That's, that's he put great... up uh, 118 on that Dolphins vaunted defense. Mm. What was the San Francisco number? <laughs> 81. All right. 
It's pretty good. Yeah. Are you happy with that though? For so, 20, for a guy that doesn't catch passes, you were. You just said you're happy with Bilal Powell, seventeen for seventy. Okay, but if you're in a PPR, you added a couple points yeah. there. He catches passes, buddy. He catches one to two every three weeks. Jags wide receiver. This sucks. DJ Chark in a protective boot using a scooter. That's not normally a good sign of being no. active the following week. And you you miss the the Miami Dolphins. Both Devontae Parker and Albert Wilson were knocked out with a concussion. This really sucks for the amazing schedule that Devontae Parker has. Yeah, oh yeah, for Devontae Parker and the streaming possibilities. I mean, the the party we were going to have when Ryan Fitzpatrick was winning championships, but you can't do it anymore. If if, he, if he's down, Devontae Parker. Uh, unfortunately, got to abandon that ship. Yeah, and it, and it really sucks the most. I don't think for those who were looking to play him next week or the next week, it's those that just played. I mean, I would have yeah. happily, more than happily, I would have uh, been thrilled to be rolling out the Ryan T uh, Fitzpatrick and Devontae Parker stack this last week. If you did that, Devontae Parker leaving early completely trashed yeah, the did. fantasy outcome. There was huge disappointment. Uh, to all the Foot Clan out there that were rolling with them, yeah, we can't when, predict concussions well enough. Yeah, when he faded, you know, stepped back to pass and didn't see Devontae Parker, he just ran. He did. That's pretty much what he did. Yeah. No one was open. And then Calvin Ridley also left with an abdominal injury. We'll follow up there. Jared Cook head injury, likely concussed. Left the game after two monster touchdowns, two catches, two touchdowns. Yeah, he had a he, he had a great fantasy. He Mike Evans did. Yep. You're happy with the result you got before he said, I'm out of here. And then Mark Andrews exited early with a knee injury. So far from Ian Rappaport, the knee injury suffered by Mark Andrews is considered minor. Do you make anything of Patrick Mahomes? He injured his throwing hand very early on in the matchup. He did end up, I mean, he played the whole thing. But it's now been a while since you've had... The Mahomes game from Mahomes. I am not going to read any more into this past week when you're on the road to New England than I would the week before. So if Mahomes is out there, you know, that's your, what options do you have? Yeah. I mean, what options are you going to go with? If you're staring down Jameis, if you're staring anymore. down Jameis Winston or Patrick Mahomes, what's the matchup for <sighs> Mahomes next week? Patrick Mahomes is going to be at home against Denver. Denver. Yeah, I mean, I. Get tough a, I'm going to play him. Yeah, I'm going to play too. Patrick Mahomes. Just presenting the news. I know. I know. He's not putting up five touchdowns a game. You're right. Uh, All right, tonight. Ja uh, Jameis is. Putting up five touchdowns <laughs> no, a game? No, no, no. Uh, Jameis is at Detroit next week. Oh, man. Oh, you mean when we play Adam Wright? Oh, in League One? So with, but with no Mike Evans. So. Yeah. Mm. All right, some Monday night football updates. The week is not over. You've got Carson Wentz versus Eli Manning this evening. Eli Manning gets to start. Golden Tate's going to play. Evan Ingram is out. This as as per usual. Well, and he everyone expected him back. I'm glad we were kind of saying we weren't confident in him. Yeah, you with the Monday night game, you couldn't be. And Nelson Aguilar is a game time decision. If you were in on the Watkins <laughs> Aguilar. By the way, you're wearing Lizard King shirt again. Yeah, well, I I wore it because I th I assumed I won. The bet. You didn't even bother to look. I did not because. So where where did Sammy Watkins finish? Because we made one of those really amazing bets. The will Sammy finish in the top forty four? That's right. And which I said no, no. And then once you saw his stat line, you were like, shoot, I lost. Which was I, I was like, shoot, maybe I lost. I saw the stat line. I was like, all right, I probably won. But unfortunately enough, wide receivers had good games this week. <laughs> And he was <laughs> wide receiver 47. Oh, and with a game to go. So, yeah. 48. 51. Yeah, 48 with another, yeah. We'll see if he's in the top 50 by the end of tonight. Oh, man, I don't like Sammy Watkins. All right, before we get into the studs and the stinkers, I want to tell you about the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. You can earn 5% back at Walmart Online. You can get those games for your kids, headphones for dad, a laptop for mom. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's Christmas season. You get 5% back at Walmart online. You also earn 2% at Walmart in-store. Restaurants travel 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart rewards card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One and A. We'd like to thank today's sponsor, Quip. Ladies and gentlemen. Quip it! When the bad breath comes along, you must quip it. 
quip it good. When the when the plaque and charter comes along, Jason. You must quip it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it quips electric toothbrush, reliable or refillable floss, also reliable because it's good floss. Yeah. And toothpaste are all intentionally designed to make good habits simple. That's what Quip is all about. Helping you build that good habit, letting you know that you are brushing the correct amount of time because it has these these sensitive sonic vibrations with a timer. goes off every 30 seconds. It lets you know, oh, I got to switch. You're exhausted in the morning. I get it. I'm there too. I forget how long I need to be brushing my teeth, but not anymore because now my toothbrush, my Quip, reminds me, my entire family, we are outfitted. We are a Quip It family. Or a Quip we quip it good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love my Quip toothbrush. And right now, you can go to getquip.com slash footballers to save on gift sets. Get your first refill free with a refill plan. The refills are great. You get a new brush head every few months. They, they handle it for you. You don't even have to think about it. Get your first re- refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. Getquip.com slash footballers. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, some pr- surprising performances in here at quarterback. Let's start uh, with a shout-out to Drew Locke. Nobody played you, but what a game for Drew Locke. Drew Locke looked very good, too. This wasn't just, oh, he kind of pulled it out with a couple big plays. Drew Locke. 22 of 27, over 300 yards, three touchdowns. On the road. And, and Cortland Sutton owners are crying. Yes, they are. Yeah, I mean, he was on the road at Houston. Not a good defense, but Drew Locke going on the road, I would have bet just about anything he'd have a poor performance, and he did not. I mean, no, they, It was Drew Locke and Noah Fant show. All right, let's talk about Drew Brees. That game was unbelievable, and I'll be completely honest. I saw it going the exact opposite way. I thought this was going to be a battle of two unbelievably good defenses, and and you know the offenses will get enough done because they're obviously ten and two teams for a reason. But holy moly, that San Francisco New Orleans game was awesome. Yeah, it was insane. Drew Brees almost three hundred fifty yards, five touchdowns. No, it, I mean I didn't see this coming either. This was a big whiff. I was looking to pivot off of Brees when you face. A San Francisco defense that had shut everybody down outside of basically Kyler Murray. I mean, nobody had yeah. put up a big performance against them. Lamar did enough against them, but Drew Brees in the pocket against San Francisco? Six touchdowns. He had a rushing uh, touchdown. Sorry. He was unbelievable. And pretty sure he, he lost. Had, I'm pretty sure he had five. He had five passing and a rushing, so he had six total. I don't think he had five. Did he have he, five passing? He, yeah. Oh, I mean, vet, yes. He had six touchdowns? Yeah. Yes. He was unbelievable, and he lost the game. Oh, my gosh. I thought the five included the rushing. Drew, well done. Yeah. And you lost. Not well done. <laughs> what a loser. Not well what done. A, what an idiot. Well, then I take it back that Jameis was the number one on the week. He was yeah. probably the number two. Jameis had 456 yards. He had four touchdowns through the air, one rushing, three interceptions. <laughs> And, but but uh, Jameis won. Yeah, he's a real winner. Yeah, my goodness. <laughs> if only the Saints had Jameis Winston. Yeah, they could have won. They could have scored more than 48 points. Huge performance from Jimmy Garoppolo in the same game as well. Four touchdowns, 350 yards. They did win the game since week nine. Here's his fantasy finishes. Two, 22. Ooh. Two, oh. three, 31. Oh. Four. Oh. So... I'll be honest, on my dynasty team, I didn't get a lot of those good performances in my starting lineup. I got one or two of them, but it's hard, it's been hard to predict. And him on the road in New Orleans, didn't expect it. Uh, no. Huge performance, not started by many. But he gets to play Atlanta next week. All right, mm. Ryan Tannehill, 21 for 27, 391 and three. This is bananas, man. They keep winning, and the next week, it's Houston – Okie dokie. Keep it going. Oh, 100%. I, I am. He is my favorite NFL player right now. I am so in love with Ryan Tannehill. He is so good for that team. He's accurate down the field. He's going to A.J. Brown left, right, and center now. And A.J. Brown, I don't know if, if uh, you know, I, I pointed this out to Mike when yeah. we were watching games yesterday. He has now hopped up two of the previous three games into the 90% 
snap count. So he's completely overtaken that wide receiver one role. I, I mean, he's just been so great for this team. Andy, you brought up there talking about a long-term contract for Tannehill. He's a guy that I think you you can – it feels like you can trust him with confidence now. Well, this should help. J.J. Uh, Zacharyson, since Ryan Tannehill took over at starter, only the Ravens have scored touchdowns at a higher rate per drive than the Titans have. When you have a running game like you have in Derrick Henry, a solid defense and weapons that can break – plays open like A.J. Brown, that's the recipe to win in the National Football League, and now they have a chance to win this division. Ryan Tannehill keeps starting him. He's got Houston, and then you'll have a tough decision about New mm -hmm. Orleans, but they will be at home in that matchup. Deshaun Watson, it was all garbage time, and nobody cares. Oh, the garbage man cares. Right, Jason? I care. <laughs> garbage time pisses me <laughs> off, man. Deshaun Watson sucked. He had a bad game. He was terrible. They got blown out. And then he just had a bunch of garbage points in the end where for it wasn't fantasy, really in the end. It was more like second quarter on because they were down 31 to 3 or something he did in the second end, quarter. He did end the garbage time with an interception. So he at least got some come up and Yeah, at, well, a little bit, but I think there was like 25 seconds on the clock when he got his last touchdown as well, down 25 points or something. So it, What do you have two rushing touchdowns? Yeah, he's... You he's, know who didn't suck, Jason? Oh, oh, <laughs> skip it. Don't you say it. Oh, we're not skipping this. Don't you say it. It was vintage Philip Rivers. Oh, it was 314 not. yards and three touchdowns. Oh, the screen pass to Eckler. Uh, how about the Mike Williams touchdown? That was oh, pretty. That was all Williams. I refuse <laughs> to credit Philip Rivers with any of it. Because you can't get that week back, can you? Uh, no, I can't. Stupid Rivers. I did buy you a Philip Rivers ornament for our Christmas yeah, tree here in the office. It was so, so, so kind. You can glance his way. Thank you. 303. Running back studs, what more can you say about Austin Eckler? Mike, one of your bold predictions on our August bold prediction show was that Austin Eckler would be a top 10 running back at season's end. If he didn't play the last two games, I think you're probably still right. Yep. Before this week where he was the no – I mean, he got the rare – Double triple, yes. And the NBA's got the double, tri the the triple double, where you get. He's got the double triple. What's the double triple? <laughs> Three digits in two categories: one hundred and one rushing yards, one hundred and twelve receiving yards, which is freaking ridiculous. Yeah, but before this performance in half point scoring, he was the running back five on the season, and every single week we field questions, even internally from some of us of, do we start Austin Eckler? Yes. Yes, you start. It's, but the, look, don't I, do the math on touches. Never <laughs> add it up. Never look at it. That's Never what look, I was going to bring up. Right? Because the reason you're asking that question is because Austin Eckler had 13 opportunities that entire game, eight carries and five targets. Sounds like about eight more than he needs to have a good game, Mike. <laughs> that touch? That's pretty much the case. Minnesota, Oakland, the next couple of weeks. Aaron Jones, 16 for 134 and one. Yeah, he finally came back. By the way, those are the two. Those are my eight-year-old's two running backs in nice. his playoff Woo! matchup: Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones. Honestly, the bigger deal for Aaron Jones, he had the, the rushing it it finally broke off. We know that Aaron Jones can rip off a huge run. Seven targets. This is what we have to see from Aaron Jones to to come back to running back one life. Well, and, and Chicago at home next the, week. You start him with confidence. This you do. is yeah. this is where two weeks ago I brought up. We were talking. About, you you were bringing up the fact that the targets weren't there, and mm -hmm. I. I talked about what LaFleur said. He said he needs to do a better job because yes. he was targeting running backs. He just yeah. wasn't targeting the right running back. He said that. He said, when I'm calling plays to throw to my halfback, I need it to be Aaron Jones. And since then, it was six targets last week, seven targets this week. Aaron Jones is involved in the passing yep. game. I can just see Devontae Adams in the background. <laughs> mm. What about me? Grimacing. Joe Mixon, have a day. 23 for 146, another 40 through the air, had a touchdown, was a monster. He's the RB14 on the year now after that slow start. He's just a great player, and he's finally giving you consistent greatness. Derrick Henry as well, two touchdowns, 103 yards on the ground. Ho-hum, it's a Derrick Henry kind of mm -hmm. week. Four straight 100-yard games, and... uh. I would bet he has another next week against Houston. I think that's accurate. Yeah. 
Uh, one and a half touchdowns next week. You're going over or under? One and a half? I'll take the over. I know. That's I'll insane. Take the over. I will too. Yeah. Raheem Mostert. Colonel Mustard is the number one running back for that team right now. 10 for 69 and a touchdown. Caught a pass from Emmanuel Sanders. Had another touchdown. We, I mean, we, Raheem Mostert is a season saver. You, I but are you really we, starting him next week? I believe we said – we. this is what we said last week about the running backs. It was like, I'm not touching any of them. Yeah. Because someone's going to have a good game. But good luck predicting who it is. Brita came back. Coleman's the starter. It was Mostert. Well, no, 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 he's not. But, I mean, going into last week, we all thought that Coleman was still the starter. Yeah. But he – Mostert clearly overtook that role. But I still have a hesitation to trust it, to say that n the following week is not just going to be, okay, Breida gets the most touches or Coleman. The nice thing is – I believe this is three straight weeks where you could have played Raheem Mostert. I think you go yes. into Atlanta with the confidence of this offense to say, hey, Mostert is a flex play. Oh, for sure. I mean, this is this is three great weeks back to back to back. But I, but as far as touches, um, I'm just three carries for Tevin Coleman. Is that what? Uh, yeah, that it, what it was. Coleman oh, was. Gosh. There was a point in the game when it was forty-two to forty that Tevin Coleman had three carries. It so was. If it, Tevin Coleman had three carries and five carries last week. So it, and Kamara, just to, man, since we're on that game, Alvin Kamara and Tevin Coleman, these. Two star running backs for yep. their respective great rushing offenses in a game where almost 100 points were scored did jack squat. That feels bad. It does feel bad. It does. We're in the studs, Jason. Don't make us feel bad yet. I apologize. We got to get to the stinkers first. But, yeah, I have confidence in Mostert. I do. Okay. I do have enough confidence to play him. He's the. He looks great. Atlanta helps for sure. Yeah, and, and then the Rams in both games at home to finish out your season. So you got two home games. He just tore up New Orleans. So it's a great offense. And they're this is a smart coach. A dumb coach puts the same players out there regardless mm -hmm. of their production. Zeke, big game on mm -hmm. Thursday night against Chicago. And then shout-out Devonta Freeman, 17 for 84 and a touchdown. Big game. Yes, yeah, start yeah. of the week, Mike. He did it. All right, let's go to the wide receivers. It wasn't him. It was the Carolina defense. How many, they are bad. How many people had Emmanuel Sanders in their lineup? That's the question. How many people went on to the next round of the playoffs? Yeah, that's, that's, that is the that's, answer to the question. Nine targets, 157 yards, threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown. Unbelievable. I mean, this was great. Yep. We were optimistic, Mike and I, that he would have a good game in yeah. the slot. Not, I didn't, Nobody I didn't saw this coming. This. No way. Um A.J. Brown, 5 for 153 and 2. Jason brought it up. The snap percentage through the roof, averaging 20 yards per catch. And he, I haven't seen A.J. Brown to date catch a pass and not break a tackle afterwards. He, he, you, That's dude, the way I feel. You can't tackle this guy. The, the defensive backs that are out there, these little itty-bitty guys, they try to tackle him, and I, I just don't get why he's so big. Because he's, he's not on paper. On you, paper, he's like six foot. And I, uh, yeah, but all his pictures were next to DK Metcalf in the <sighs> draft season. That's the problem. He's, you looked at, oh, well, look at that baby. Yeah, he is a B. He's a tank out there. Yeah. Nobody can tackle this guy in the open field. You have little crossing routes. You know, you're 15 yards away, a little five-yard cross, and then there's three guys that, that are dragging on him as he falls into the end zone. It's He's... He's a beast. Breaking news, Michael Thomas is good. 11 for 134 and 1 on 15 targets. Oh, no drop for that? Michael Thomas? The, the breaking news drop? No, yes. sorry. Hey, Deontay Johnson. 6 for 60 hey, and a touchdown on Deontay 8 targets. Johnson played Arizona. He did. If you But I, I thought he would have just as good of a game as James Washington because the targets had been there the previous week. And he got the uh, special teams touchdown, so in your league you might have got the, uh, the double touch. But are you... Playing him against Buffalo? It, it no, because I am not. Not well, with Duck. Not no. only that, but the expectation, in addition to the bad matchup, is that Juju will be back this week. That could have been in the news. <laughs> Juju's like, why you got to bring me back against <laughs> Tredavious White? Yeah. So, no, you're not starting any of the yeah. uh, Steelers' weapons there. It was a good day to be a Robbie or a Bobby. Robert Woods, 7 for 98 in his first receiving touchdown on the year on nine targets. Robbie Anderson, Seven for one, sixteen and one. What is this? Four straight good games for Robbie Anderson. Yep. 
taking it's the end taking of the, over. It's the end of the year. It's Robbie season. This is what it, re- it does. It really is. What was the? Because uh, he's reminded. He's like, oh crap, I got to get a new contract next year. Jason, <laughs> are you pull, are up. you pulling up snap counts for Rams wide receivers? Can you um, can you do that? I, I can. I know that it was a bizarro game that they implemented a. A new strategy, they being McVay and the Rams, that they had not ever done before, in which they dominated with it. Uh, heavy run game, heavy tight ends. And if you played Brandon Cooks, one, what were you doing? You, you shouldn't have. Uh, but if you played Cooper Cup, you were very frustrated. Cooper Cup was in on 28.6% of the offensive snaps. He didn't play two-thirds of the offensive game. And the thing what? is, is it worked. This was a specific game plan, so you don't know. You don't know, is this just they saw something with the Seahawks defense that they could exploit with this specific matchup, or did they see something with their personnel where they said, I think we're going to be better served rolling out this offense, and we don't know for sure which one it is. One of them is going to hurt Cooper Cup going forward. One of them is not. Yeah, I I read very little into it from an implication standpoint for Cooper Cup. This is a game where – they were up twenty-one to three. That's very to true. to start the game. Cup had a touchdown, mind you. It wasn't a high yardage day, but he had four receptions and a touchdown. And they were protecting the lead for the back half of the game. So, I think they came out. They caught him by surprise. Robert Woods has been so heavily involved lately. A lot of it in. I mean, he had two uh, rushes. I think in this game, he had some screen passes. Uh, so I'm not. I'm personally not overreacting to it. It is very interesting. But how are you reacting to Robert Woods last four games, eleven targets, nine, eighteen, nine targets? Like thumbs up, Robert, thumbs up for Robert. But I said like Robert Woods is back. Yes, Ro- Robert Woods is is back. He's I mean he is him and Cup are both guys that you Robert should Woods be has starting. Been great man, he is. And those in those four games, he has had no fewer than ninety five receiving yards. Yeah, well, he he's been a top been twenty great. wide receiver for this last month now, every single week. Um, and so, yeah, you you keep you keep going. This is two back to back top ten performances for Woods. Robert Woods and Robbie Anderson are actually both in the top three in total receiving yardage over the last from weeks eleven through fourteen. Julian Edelman eight for ninety five and a touchdown, doing his thing. Yep. No one else around him can do anything. No, they can't. Uh, Allen Robinson, the big game on Thursday on eight targets. And then Zach Pascal. It was hey, a Pascal week. He did it. He you came guys through. Were, you guys were right. Mm. And he hadn't done anything through about half the game. No, yeah. no catches and turned it into five for 74 and a touchdown on nine targets. On the Sunday Live, I Pascal was a huge uh, question mark. It, he was involved in tons and tons of the questions. And it was like, I'm playing him. I should have more confidence. And Zach, like everything is there. He's, you know, he's a fine wide receiver, but the opportunity against the worst, like the worst secondary in the league, all the offensive players for the Colts are missing, and yet there's still hesitation to play this guy. But thankfully, it worked out this week. Yeah, it was it was funny. We we had someone tweet uh, us our ballers on a budget picks um, this last week. <laughs> they were like, they hated them. Yeah. So they, they thought, didn't. So they didn't play him in right. DFS. And and I believe it was Zach Pascal. Uh, did you have? Uh, I had Emmanuel, Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. And Ian Thomas. Yeah. It three worked, cheap options. It worked that all out. Were awesome. It was a good week for it them. Was, it and was. It's not always a good week, but it was. But this, this one week. was. Yeah. Noah Fant four for one thirteen and one. This was uh, this was hard to see coming for me. Because the previous week he had just one reception with Drew Locke and uh, Hireman had actually had more. So, who, by the way, scored in this game too. So, both tight ends friendly for Drew Locke at the expense of Cortland yeah. Sutton. I mean, it, it was only four targets, but Noah Fant is – he's a big play guy. He's yards after catch. If you watch the first one where the pass actually was almost picked off that Drew Locke threw. So, the defender, the defender tried to jump the route opening things up for Fant, who's able to run down the field. But once he gets going, man, hopefully Noah Fant could become one of these George Kittle, Mark Andrews type of players next year. The two players that you need to pay attention to, Tyler Higby, Ian Thomas, in terms of value at tight end, 11 targets and 10 targets. You want to chase those kind of numbers. And Higby has Dallas next week. If ever is out again, Higby seems to be very involved. If Cooper Cup had a little bit better arm he would have had a second touchdown in this oh, game oh yeah that's true and uh ian thomas mike you mentioned it 
Great opportunity. Oh, my goodness. And next week, I mean, Seattle. Greg, Greg oh. Olson only missed the game with concussion, so we have no idea where he is in the protocol if he's going to be back. But if he is out, Ian Thomas against the freaking Seahawks. The Seahawks would love it. cannot guard the tight no. end. They're exactly like Arizona. It's why Higby was a good play this week, and Higby went crazy. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess you need to mention, since we are in the studs of the week, uh, Arizona's tight end defense. <laughs> woo They did it! They they just needed Duck Hodges at quarterback. Well, and they Vance also, McDonald they, to leave with injury. And a Vance McDonald concussion. Yeah, but he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't. Well, he still could have. Yeah, you never know, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Vance this, McDonald. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is this is actually the most painful segment from like this week, next week. It's all right. Well, this, this is what we're here. We're here to. Are we? Are we here to just rub in your loss? No, no, no. No, no. we're here to lift you up and yes. understand that. We, you Empathize. Know. The, the this is what happened, man. We're yeah. here for you. We feel what you feel. Mm. I think he just wants to talk about Russell Wilson. He is so excited <laughs> to talk about Russell. Wait, Wilson. the the guy who's been the quarterback sixteen or lower in six of his oh past my seven gosh. weeks. That is a disaster. That's a guy. That I is mean, not Jason was here. basically in his underwear running around with Russell Wilson's number tattooed on his chest for the first half of the year. And here's Mike. <laughs> but because here, the, to, to just, let, let me just take oh, people back. Let I me was, take people back in time. Okay. I can't do the sound effect for going back in time. <laughs> thank you. That was more of a bibbity bobbity boo but When we were, in Ca- we were in California, do, we did the Rich Eisen show. We're at our hotel. We did the beach race where Brooks ran into the ocean and won some money. And then I think that same night, apparently, yes, you two spent like two hours in the hotel lobby mm-hmm. yelling at each other. Yes, it was everything was shut down. There is no one around except for Jason, I, and our manager. And we are, I mean, it it was definitely there was no animosity, it was but it playful, it became loud a, banter. It became a very spirited debate. Yeah, on, just going on back and Wilson. forth on whether or not you know he's going to get it done or not. And I and that's where back and forth is the right phrase. Back and forth is the right phrase for Russell Wilson, who has been very bad lately. But that is where we came up with the top twelve water bet, probably the most important bet of the year because we were both so passionate about it. And I realize Russell Wilson has been bad, but he's also the quarterback for. Yeah, you're, you're, and I'm going to win. You're going to win, but, which, which really stinks because Russell Wilson has five performances you're as going a top to win, 12 guy. But five. fantasy owners are going to lose. Yes, that is fair. And so, Mike, uh, you helped people, and I was right. Russell gets to play Carolina next week. Well, that's the question. If you <gasps> if you made it through <gasps> with Russell, which is possible. Uh, and then Arizona. Yeah, I'll play him. Do you play him in the next two weeks? Yes. Yeah, I would. Okay, Baker Mayfield. Mm. But it was such a good matchup. Mm. Yeah, and well, but here, here's a little hot tip. Cincinnati's been a really bad matchup for like yeah. four weeks for quarterbacks, yeah. and, which we mentioned last week because Darnold had struggled, and they aren't doing what they did at the beginning of the year. All, all around, it's not just for quarterbacks. You know, uh, if you he look had 92 at them, passing yards? If you, if you look at Wait. them... Is, that's Brooks, what? is that a misprint? Oh, one sec. That has I think that's 192. Okay, 192. Okay. Oh, goodness. Um, You're yeah. fired, Brooks. Yes. Understandable. Uh, pack, pack your things. But wait till also after finish you the produce show. the show. Make sure you yeah, show. get it up on uh, YouTube first. Yeah. Please. Make sure it's on Spotify as well. Pack, and then pack. Pack, pack and then those things. scooch. Baker yeah. Mayfield. But be back here tomorrow, okay? Baker yeah. place. Same time, same place. Same time, same time. But you're, you're half, still paying. half pay. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's very generous of you. Thank you. Uh, Baker plays Arizona next week. I will. Nope. Did it, did oh it, yes. Did it, did it, did oh it, gosh, did it. that's a hard one. No, that's not hard at all. I will play. I will play Baker Mayfield against Arizona. Baker May. They are Arizona is hot trash. Uh, Duck Hodges. Fine. How D- dare you, Mike? They are steamy hippopotamus poo. No, I'm. I'm a big fan of trash, and I don't like the oh. comparison. <laughs> yeah, that's an <laughs> I've, I've insulted your garbage. Yes. Baker Mayfield is in play next week. He. He is. That's I think gross. he is. He, he is. He is. Um, he did. They did win. They won the game. Big winner. Big nice. winner. Nice. Baker Mayfield, greater sign Tom Brady. Oh. Brady, Brady lost. Uh-oh. The hot streak is over. Ooh. All right. Alvin Kamara, what do you do? You, you talk about going into next year with Odell Beckham mindset and, and framing things. How are people going to frame Alvin Kamara after what what is 
at a minimum, a disappointing season, uh, bordering on bust if he knocked you out of the playoffs this week, in a game with 48 versus 46 points to go 13 for 25, 4 for 18 on six targets, fumbled. I mean, this is... This is a it's bust. Tough. This is a bust after this week. After this week, it's an official bust. Before oh, you were frustrated, you were frustrated, but you could have gotten to the playoffs. And if you got to the playoffs with Camara, I hope that you made it through and your opponent had a, a rough day. And I do believe, you know, look, better days are in store, but he's he's an absolute bust for what you thought you were drafting this year. And he hurt you because of where you drafted him. Like, Sony Michelle is an epic bust, but he wasn't a first round. Right. He's a disappointment. Fourth, uh, fourth round guy that's like, ah, eh, whatever. All right. No Snell phone coverage. Benny Snell, 16 for 41. We're allowing that. And a fumble. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I just uh, heard it. It just got to my ears. Did he say no Snell phone he coverage? He certainly did. You're done right, I did. Oh, that what? Oh, do we. Hold on. What Look, are you. Oh, it be got to be kind. I like oh zero. Oh, no, no, I'll give that a three. No, my for Mike that's like a five to five three. to it's six. A three. That's All a, right, I would never tell a joke like that. There are a lot of people upset with Benny Snell's performance against Arizona. Thank you for the one. That's a sympathy one. You yeah. gave me a sympathy one. Um, what what do you make of this? I mean, James Conner's supposed to be back next week. They play Buffalo. I'm I I, I really believe that James Conner's back, so it'll be a moot point for All right. Snell. Hey, look, Chiefs running backs were worthless. McCoy, Thompson, Ware, stink, stink, stunk. I, I mean, mean, just nice. We said to stay away from all Chiefs running backs and even the Niners running backs, and we were right with everybody across the board. Except, except for Mostert. Except for Mostert. Most, yeah. Mostert got it done. But Spencer Ware, for all the Darwin Thompson truthers out there, Spencer Ware from the couch – Received more carries than Darwin Thompson. Yeah, Darwin did have four for 36 in the passing game. Probably the best fantasy day was Darwin over LaShawn McCoy in a PPR league. Hmm, that's embarrassing. It is. <laughs> it is. A, <laughs> the best fantasy day for LaShawn McCoy. Or for, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not surprised Spencer Ware was on the field. Yeah. It was a messy situation. I'm not surprised because he knows the offense and trust. And we saw this with Chark Hendrick West before. Right. The exact same thing. Off the street, Char West gets re-signed. He's on the field for a billion snaps. Does this give you more confidence when Damian Williams uh, comes back because nobody's good and they sort of? But yeah, I, you can't. Are you are you able to play Damian if he's active next week against Denver? I, I, I need to give it a week. I think you'll be. We'll ask the question all week long. We'll be saying Fair DeAndre enough. Washington or Bilal Powell or stay tuned. Stay tuned. Matt Breida, six for fifty four. Classic Matt Breida. I mean, he is a monster. Just didn't get a lot of work. And uh, probably can't start him. Jamal Williams? Mm. Where? Mm. Where? Mm. 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 All right, Devontae Adams. Oh, goodness. How disappointing was this? Four Very. for 41 on six targets. Very disappointing. Very, if you had him, I had him. I'm with you. I mean, it. it yeah, you made it through without him. Well, I hope. If Carson Wentz outscores Alshon Jeffrey by five points, I made it through without Devontae Adams. Who uh, needs that guy? Get your mind right, Devontae. You want to know another bet you lost? No. The DK Metcalf Tyler Lockett bet. Mm. Oh, goodness. Tyler, Tyler Lockett, Lockett is. I, you can't play him right now. I agree. You cannot play him right now. Ari Four for 43. Carolina and Arizona. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Watch me oh, play him. I keep forgetting. No. No. All right. We'll come up with I another mean, look, Tyler Lockett bet. Anybody, uh, any start sick uh, question I'm, has an answer. Like, Lockett's going to get started over a lot of trash. We've already got the bets right in front of us, Jason. Tyler Lockett versus Odell Beckham. Oh, oh Beckham against was, Arizona? Beckham was two for two 39. bad <laughs> options against two great matchups, yeah. and which one do you want And both players might be hurt right yeah. now. That's true. That's true. Oh, so, uh, I will go with... Marquise Brown. I will go with Odell Beckham in that situation. I will go with the passing volume. I don't think I, Carolina, you can run on them easier than you can run on Arizona. And the Seattle offense is built to run the football. Um, I will go with Odell Beckham this week and Tyler Lockett next week. Just give me those Arizona matchups. Yeah. Cortland Sutton, 5 for 34. Uh, disappointing performance in a game where Drew Locke dominated. It just wasn't a Cortland Sutton week. No touchdowns. Uh, seven targets, didn't I'm, make a play. I'm a little surprised that Brooks let Julio Jones off the hook here. 
Is he not in the stinkers? No. I mean, five, five for 66. He belongs there. Yeah, he does. In, because even though five for 66 might be a, an okay g- game in the playoffs. Yeah, like Sammy Watkins is like, please. Because I – look <laughs> – I had him. I survived the Julio Devonte Adams. That's the fact stack. that Ad, both Adams and Jones. Not without whining Oof. and complaining about them every thirty seconds for eight hours in a row. That's how I got through it mentally, yeah. emotionally. Yes. yes, coping. Yeah, anger. It's tilting. Um, but yeah, Julio very disappointing. Yeah, actually, he's had some. He's been pretty disappointing over the last like six to eight weeks. Well. To to be fair to him in the game against Tampa, he was hurt, so he was only in about half the game. But your ending stat line is still five for sixty eight, so that's two straight games. Do you have his consistency chart up? I can grab it real quick. Yeah, I'd I'd be curious his fantasy finishes for the last six weeks of playing, and you have to factor injury in to the Julio Jones equation in general. Julio's because- uh going from uh last week backwards was the wide receiver thirty two. 20 30 then it was his bye week yeah he's, that's it's been a rough i mean that's that's not good that's he's not stretch. killed you he's not done like like he wasn't originally in this you know stinker segment because he didn't kill you right. i think he i think that's killing fantasy owners for where he's what he's supposed to be on your team sure yes I if mean, your one is putting up a, a a wide receiver 30 performance and you never get that that breakout but uh Apparently, Al Borland also survived the Julio Adams stack. Oh, wow. What a nice stack that seems like it should be. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, ridiculous. Get it together, guys. I'm going to need you next week. Yeah, you guys should have been playing Pascal. Hollywood Brown, three catches, negative two yards on three targets. Impressive work. I feel like you kind of could see that one. We said sit him. The matchup was tough, and he was on the injury report all week. Sit him. Sit John Brown. Yep. Brown, John, John Brown, Brown and Brown flush them down. Yeah, John. Oh, oh I, get, I get what you did. Yeah, uh, John Snail Brown. Snail phone. <laughs> we said <laughs> it's getting worse. Um, yeah, John Brown. We said to to bench him uh, this past week. It was a difficult matchup, but his targets have completely shifted. He has beaten up the easy opponents and has really disappeared against difficult matchups. Cole Beasley got another touchdown this last week. Um, it, it's clear that they're using him around the goal line as just a guy that can create a little bit of separation. I think and he, then this following this coming week, he's at Pittsburgh, and then, then New, at England. New England. I think this is you say John Brown, great, great season, buddy. I'll see you next year. Yeah, you drop I, drop ski. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and why did we not mention Aaron Rodgers? Oof. We did not at the top of the stinkers. Aaron he belongs Rodgers. there. Does he? Yeah. yeah he, I believe he had one I touchdown. mean, this was the yeah. game where you were supposed to yeah. play, play, cut. You're you're right. 195 I mean, Aaron and Rodgers, one. It, that's a terrible game. Again, for the expectations, he was a lot of people's number one quarterback he on was, the week. He was my number one, but this, I mean, this 195 is, and one. Now, fantasy players don't have to look at the plan and I, question it. Yes. This is a mercy. Yes. This, this is, is a, a mercy. mercy killing. Yes. And I hopefully I, you're still in the playoffs. Not no, Lambo's not. Uh, oh, Mr. No. Al Borland is out because of uh, your your best friend Aaron. How I, do you feel about that? It was really because of Emmanuel Sanders, but yeah, this, the Aaron Rodgers start hurt. What if he bad. threw two more touchdowns? Would you still been in it? Nope. Oh, yeah, right, Emmanuel well. Sanders did, did that to a lot of people. Uh, but, but this was hugely disappointing. Washington, oh. the matchup was supposed to be. Yeah, you know, when your quarterback completely. Uh, disappoints to a to a large degree it's very difficult to win those weeks and so yeah, like russell last night exactly i think most people with aaron Rodgers probably are not moving on to the next round let's just in from brandon cook <laughs> yeah he is not playable in See any, next in year, any buddy. capacity and then uh tyrell williams can't play him jamison crowder it was fun while it lasted. It's, Another it's seven over. targets. It's over. And then Baltimore, Pittsburgh on the next two weeks. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Uh, and then James Washington, yeah. four for thirty-three. Not a good game. His pants are not that large yet. They're not that large, but they were for this week. Yeah, the Arizona James Washington was in people pretty. If, them. Yeah, he was probably being played. 
Yeah, at tight end, uh, I feel like you got to start it off with Vance McDonald. I know he exited uh, in the third quarter with a concussion. Maybe he could have done something. Up to that point, did nothing. And against Arizona, everyone was disappointed, similar to James Washington. He didn't have big pants, but the matchup made you play him. Arizona hands you a pair of giant pants. Now, thank at, at the tight ends, <laughs> they get handed, like, put these on. Now, in the locker room? Uh -huh, right. Uh -huh. You're, like, you're going to need these. <laughs> to <laughs> stuff with points, <laughs> normally. <laughs> Um, and, and thankfully McDonald stuffed them with something else. I did tell people, oh, no. I did tell people all week. I said, you know, Vance McDonald, while he's got the great matchup, there's probably a better option. You can easily go get Jack Doyle, <laughs> you know, stunk. who, Oh, we're in the stinkers of the week. Jack Doyle two for 27 on six targets. Yeah. Baby hands, baby hands, catch the ball. There were like three plays. I was like, just catch. And Kyle Rudolph, the, the, the hot streak ended for Kyle Rudolph. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the way it's written in the doc, I almost read it as negative one catch for 14 yards, mm. which would have been really impressive. And Austin Hooper on his return. Uh, that stinks, Six man. targets, but just two catches. That That's And Jacob rough. Hollister had some drops yesterday, too. Only four for 34. So The Hoop Austin Hooper one it, really hurts. It's ironic, yeah. it's ironic, though, because so Austin Hooper, Jack Doyle, Jacob Hollister, all three – Stinkers of the week, terrible. All three, I am absolutely not jumping off or abandoning a ship. They had six targets each. They had they all three had a couple drops. You know, tight ends are always going to have bad right. games, and I well, don't Do Doyle's done it a little bit more than some of the others in terms of disappearing, and he's not the athlete that a Noah Fant is. So if Noah Fant was out there, I would be pivoting from Jack Doyle. On to the Noah Fant upside. Mm, no way. I Absolutely. Would, I would stick with the targets. I mean, you also have to factor in, I guess they did score 35 points. But it was like they had the uh, Jacoby. Defensive touchdown. Yeah, they had that. And then and Jacoby had the 45-yard touchdown to Johnson, which then takes away opportunity. I mean, some things were – some things that won't normally happen were up against Jack Doyle. I'd stick with the targets. I mean, uh, Noah Fant's been outperforming him over the last uh, five weeks as well, so I, I don't think that's a, a leap. It's not like Jack Doyle's been well, a uh, monster. Assuming I'm in the playoffs next week on my Dynasty roster, I have Noah Fant and Jack Doyle, so I oh. will have well, to make you, this You have decision. to look at upside. I, I think nobody's going to argue that Noah Fant has less upside than Jack Doyle. Noah Fant can do the George Kittle – 68-yard touchdown. Jack Doyle's never run 68 consecutive no. yards in his life. Yeah, I, I, I had the pleasure of watching uh, Noah Fant and Hayden Hurst on my bench with Jack Doyle in my lineup. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe it's a little little painful, but you, you got through. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Mm. Might need a little extra this week. If it yeah. costs you a playoff spot, I'm sorry. You get those sweaty feet while you're watching. But hopefully you made it through. Want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. An awesome Eckler signed oh. jersey, $74.94. PristineAuction.com. I'm, I'm partial to the Austin Reckler. I like, oh, see, I, like I that love one. the awesome Eckler. Yeah. Awesome Eckler is fantastic. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Not as much as like the Snell phone thing, but otherwise. <laughs> Call you on the Snell phone. <laughs> <laughs> so bad uh, we're giving away a Nick Chubb jersey footclangiveaway.com be sure to check it out that's it for today's episode waivers tomorrow good well, luck tonight we hope you don't have to sweat anything hope we'll see you next week goodbye let's go Carson Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.